Okay, well, welcome to the first podcast. Uh, we're here. My name's Luke Cove. I'm here with Jake, who's uh, head of marketing here at Lightning Energy. How are you, Jake? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, doing well, doing well. So first podcast, so we're going to see how we go, if there's any teething issues, hopefully, hopefully not. But okay, so we're going to get straight into it. So Jake, I want to speak to you first. I want, to, I want you to tell the people out there about your role in Lightning Energy and um, yeah, how long you've been here and, and what do you do at the company right now? Um, well, all right. I've been with Lighting Energy for almost 18 months now. Um, wow. Originally on as <laughs> marketing manager, but um, yeah, I think just given my um, kind of tool set of knowledge, it's definitely expanded um, across like, you know, from web development, graphic design, and then also implementing advertising. So it's, it's really fun because it's so varied. A bit of a, a jack of all digital trades. Yeah, yeah, in a sense, like it's <laughs> if you need results on anything digital, I'm kind of the dude. Yeah, yeah, you, you're the digital equivalent of a handyman. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, like when you've <laughs> you, got an idea or a vision, I'm like the guy that's like, all right, let's let's figure out how to build it and yep. get it done. Yep, you broke something, you put a hole in the wall, you need me to fix the locks. Yep, I got you. <laughs> it's a bit like yep. that. Yeah. Log into HubSpot, log into the website. Yep, hack the APIs, all that. Yeah. Hack uh, the mainframe. <laughs> <laughs> hack into the matrix to make sure everything's working properly, so the uh, whole the machine keeps running efficiently. That's and it. yes, yes, you do, you're doing a great job with that so far. If I have to say, no, absolutely, thanks, I appreciate that. a terrific, terrific job. So uh, <laughs> now, yeah. So do you want to do you want to tell us um, a little bit more? What do you like working about Lightning Energy so far? You've been here for a while now. Um, I got to say, my favorite thing is just the variance. Yeah, like I'm always doing something different. Um, in other jobs where it was similar, it was very rudimentary, kind of come in, same thing every day. And I'm kind of the kind of person where I like the creative stuff, but also like a bit of the like brainier stuff, like um, data analysis and stuff. So, you know, coming here, it's great because it's like in the morning, I'll do some of the stuff where it's like reporting, kind of data heavy stuff, and then I'll start working on creative. Yeah. You've got a, a crazy boss that comes in with a new business idea every day. Keys hey, on the toes. <laughs> drop everything. We're doing this now. We're doing home insulation now. We're doing what? What are you talking about? That's it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's good because, yeah, it's it's um, it's very much nothing's the same every day. I walk in and yeah, you're like, all right, here's the plan. Here's yep. what we're gonna do. But it's it's great because it allows me to be challenged and also try new things. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Even the location is like, oh, Jake, we're moving locations now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Ironically, yeah. I live in the smack bang between the two locations. So, Yeah, so you do get a bit of a variety as well. Obviously, we've got the other location, which is our original location at Clayton, where the, we've got the warehouse and all the operations staff, the, the engine of the business, as they say. And then we've got the front end of the business down at Morven East for the showroom. So we've got, obviously, me, you know, and we've got all of the sales team, the energy efficiency experts, and yeah, head of marketing here as well. Videographer spends most of his time here. And now we've got the podcast here at Malvern East as well. So we're really trying to turn this into the Mecca. So we need you, we need your help to uh, let everyone know. <laughs> 100%. And I think we've, we're seeing a great reception already. Um, even with some of the hurdles we've had with Google, um, <laughs> not wanting to prove that we were the, like here. I think that was more an issue on their back end, but honestly, it's been, I think it's been a great reception. Even um, the other day when I was going to get lunch, I was looking across the road. Yeah. And you just see this, this big black box with this <laughs> huge gradient stripe down the side and you go, whoa, what is that? Yeah, it's, it looks like a nightclub. And you know, we've been here for about a month now and you just reminded me that I haven't come here at night yet oh. to see my LED lights out the front, lighting up the whole of Dandenong Road. Mate, I um, I drove past. I think it was last night, actually. Yeah, and the only lights that we had on were obviously the back wall LED lights in the panel of the summer. Yeah, lighting and oh man, I was like, damn, it looks like the future in there. Oh yeah, it's the future. Yeah, well, uh, that's that's great. Look, and I wanted to talk about a few events we've got coming up, which you're obviously helping us promote. So, coming up, we've got quite a lot. So we did a a workshop on the weekend with Reclaim talking about hot water 
and that was a fully booked out too fully booked out the place was was packed we had a capacity of well we we set the capacity at 30 people and there was a little bit of space so i think next time we're going to set the capacity to 50 people 50 rsvps and we're going to see if we can fill the room with 50 30 was a lot but i'm not against having more people there as long as we can get some more of our team to come down and help people uh, understand all the products and the Q&A is after and everything. But yeah, look, I wanted to talk about what's coming up. So next Saturday, we've got Tim Forsey, who's a, a bit of a character in the industry. He was, um, I believe he founded um, My Efficient Electric Home, a Facebook group, or he was an administrator there. I'm not sure if he is anymore, but he's recently brought out a book, My Efficient Electric Home Handbook which is great. There's a whole bunch of information in there that to, to help the homeowners find out about everything they need. You know, we've got, we've got things here on climate change and the emergency as to why. We were talking about how we're gonna get off the gas. And then we've gone into some real strong action plans. So he talks a lot about heating and cooling, you know, cooking without gas, induction cooktops. You know, there's a chapter called, Do You Live in a Leaky Bucket? And uh, I assume he talks about yeah, some home insulation and then, you know, drought proofing, clearing the air. Yeah, there is, yeah. Sorry, there is definitely a section here on home insulation, windows, solar panels and batteries. Are they worth it? Even what to do if you're a renter. So... Kind of got a bit of something for everyone by the, by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I reached out to him and I said, Tim, buddy, I need you to come in. I want you to talk to my my database about this because we've got a lot of people that are looking into this home electrification at the moment and they go on the whole nine yards so we've got that coming up so look as, as far as that i know you've been working on some marketing campaigns let's talk about the my efficient electric home workshop we're doing first what's our marketing strategy for that like uh, jake <laughs> that's right what's it? <laughs> the, the marketing strategy for that is pretty much um we're going to kind of attack from all angles like considering the people that um, Tim Forsey has the following as well. Um, Tim Forsey's, you know, he's got over 12 years as an energy advisor. So the guy's got quite a bit of experience, but I think a lot of his fans are on Facebook more than Instagram. So we're going a lot more Facebook heavy with um, the advertising strategy, but essentially we'll be making events, driving people to the site, yep. getting tickets because like you said, um, I think 50 is good, but they're always very, um, intimate you know being yeah. in the, at the warehouse i think with a lower lower volume keeping it intimate making it a bit more personal for the people that come because like you said a lot of the stuff that um tim talks about in his book is all stuff that a lot of our database want they're all all, all about how can i maximize um my like my house efficiency essentially i don't want to give more money to the electricity companies how can i stop that as much as possible and i think with our recent transition and insulation, it's huge. Like no one's thinking about the fact that, you know, your heat can just leak out and then your AC is working overtime. Well, I think it's like, if you've got a soccer team, right? And you've got an amazing striker who can get goals. Great, like that's your solar panels. Mm. You know, your solar panels are your strikers. They're there kicking goals, you know, everyone loves them. But you've got to think you need a, you need defense as well. You need a goalie on your side, making sure no balls get in, or in this case, none of the hot air getting out or, or vice versa. So mm. it's really it's really important that you do think about insulation because like he said, is your house a leaky bucket? And I spoke to someone last week about insulation and they said, it's like wrapping your house in a big blanket to make sure every kilowatt of power you generate stays in the house. And that's it, you, you, your, your system has to work so much less um, yeah, your system doesn't work, have to work as hard to then get those results and keep the house cool or hot. Yeah, it's like driving around in a petrol car when you've put a screwdriver through the tank and you're leaking fuel everywhere. Exactly, it's not efficient. Like it's, it, it's yeah, a waste. 100%. Even here, before we, um, you know, when we, had, when we were doing all the renovations still and we had the manhole off, we had a lot of, <laughs> you could, I could feel, I mean, probably because I was under the manhole, but I could definitely feel the, um, the heat escaping. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, look, so that's really good. So Tim Forsey coming in, in next Saturday, really looking forward to that. So then after that, we've got Enphase coming in. So we've got Duncan McGregor. I believe he's the, the head technical man at Enphase. He's, he's the guy, he runs a lot of the installer workshops, the industry events and telling people how, 
how to install the products. So we've got him actually coming in for a more homeowner centric kind of workshop where he's going to talk to homeowners directly about Enphase, the benefits of Enphase and the battery and the capabilities, home energy managements and where it's going in the future. So I think that's going to be the week after. That's going to be on a Wednesday night. So we're going to put a big schedule of all these events out as well for you to look at. Yeah, I'm actually uh, currently designing that. I mean, probably by the time this is published, it'll be out. But the idea is to kind of make it look like a bit of like a poster for a music festival or something with dates. So yep. yeah, you know, I get, get to have fun, be a bit more creative and, you know, make it a fun way, but still let people know because we've got a lot coming on. It's not just those two, you know, we've got um, Omi and... Um, yeah. Yeah, Omi and... Does yeah, look, we, yeah. Wanted to, we wanted to be fun. We wanted to be a bit like a party. But yeah, just because it's renewable energy doesn't, need to mean, doesn't mean it needs to be boring. But yeah, so then after, we've, after Enphase, we've got REA coming to talk about their Australian panels. We've built in Enphase microinverters. And we've got the, the All Energy Conference, obviously. Then we're going to have Nigel Morris down from Catch Power uh, slash Solar Analytics. Uh, Solar Analytics recently acquired by Catch Power. So oh. Nigel... I yeah. didn't know about that. Yeah, that's oh. huge, huge. Yeah, yeah, huge news in the industry. Huge figure in the industry, Nigel Morris. So we're going to have him down to talk about the benefits of catch power and the metering and plan optimizer and all of the cool stuff that he can do with his little metering product. Mm -hmm. Him and his team, of course. And then, yeah, in November, we've scheduled Tesla. So we're going to have James coming down from Tesla to talk about Power 3 and all, all the functionality that comes with the new product, how you can maximize your return on investment, how you can maximize the amount of solar that you have connected to the inverter slash battery built into one. And then after that, we've got Franklin coming in as well. Bit of a competitor to Tesla. What are, you, what are your thoughts on Franklin, Jake? <laughs> I said this to them because um, yeah, me, me and Franklin have gone back, at, back and forth a little bit over emails. Um, <laughs> yep. And look, I think with the Powerwall 2 being sunset, I think the um, the Franklin battery had, definitely has a place now. Because um, it, it, it's a great value, because if you... Powerwall 2s are great for retrofits, because the Powerwall 3 has the inbuilt inverter. So with Franklin being more focused on being a retrofitable product, I think it definitely, um, yeah, definitely has a place. And it's a funky name, especially for the Aussie market, but... Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, yeah, but I, I feel like it's such a stretch for the Aussies. Like you, yeah, I, like I, 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 I know no, about Benjamin. I, was, I had to Google it just to refresh my memory of. Uh, yeah, so, well, so what did he do again? Okay, cool. Yeah, because I was like, oh, I know the guy got electrocuted by thunderstorm, <laughs> but I'm like, oh yeah, that like, yeah, I don't think it rings as true for us as it does for Americans. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, look, it, it's good. I, I, I'm interested to see how the Franklin product goes in the Australian market. It's got that point of a kilowatt more than the Tesla Powerwall. I feel like it's going to replace the Powerwall too for the retrofit installations, potentially. And it, I believe it has a generator changeover switch built into the A gate. Yes, there. yeah. The um, I think it'd be great for the country because there is a hookup for your um, generator. And the thing is you can even charge the battery off the generator, I believe. Yeah, which is incredible. I get a lot of people ask us about that out in the country. They are, are looking for a solution like that. Mm. And a lot of people these days don't like Elon. Most people know how I feel about Elon. I like Elon personally, but a lot of people don't. So, hey, you know, we can offer we can offer a Tesla or we can offer a Franklin, whatever you prefer. They're both great batteries. So it's going to be really exciting to see what happens in 2025 as, as Tesla moves more to be more of a hybrid solution and then Franklin steps up in the retrofit kind of market. Yeah, I'm hoping that's that's the case because the architecture that Franklin offers is super um, super good. It's it's pretty advanced, but it's also the way that they explain it's pretty easy to, to wrap your head around. Yeah, and look, the other thing I wanted to talk about is another event we've got coming up. It's later in November, so you've got a lot of time to prepare for this one, but we're going to have the EV charging day. Now, in the EV charging day, we're going to have people come from My Energy, and they're going to be talking about the Zappi charger and the solar awareness and all the all of the cool features that comes with the Zappi charger. And we've got a newer product on the market by Ohm EV. So interesting enough, some of the guys from Wallbox, I think that they uh, they left Wallbox. The Wallbox was had some mixed results in Australia. 
I think there was a bit of lack of support there, so it didn't really take off. And now a bunch of the guys have moved over to OMEV and they're going to be coming in. It's looking like the 23rd of November. So we're going to have two different manufacturers come in and they're both going to be talking about EV charges. And I've confirmed this with both of them. They're both, they, they know there's other people coming in, but it might be a little bit of a rap battle between the EV charger manufacturers. I think that would be pretty cool. We get a bit of an Eminem style battle. It could even uh, be like a, uh, oh, like the sharks. You know what I mean? Like when it comes yeah. to investment, like Shark Tank. Yeah, Shark Tank. You've got two two manufacturers trying to convince the homeowners that like, yeah, my charging solution's the best. You Invest really gotta... in my charging solution. I, I like the idea of you know two EV charger manufacturers walk in, one walks out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that'll be interesting. You know, you, you've got to keep this an octagon in the, uh, the back, <laughs> at the back where the ACs are. Look, I've spoken to both of these guys about it and said, "How do you guys feel about coming in and doing a talk with a competitor on the same day?" And they've both said, "I think the customer would really like that." So I think if we're we're customer centric, which we are, I think it's going to be a good experience for them. So if people want to learn about a different range of EV chargers, I might even chime in, talk about the Tesla wall connector as well. A uh, much more cost-effective EV charger, but you know, in a lot of instances, particularly people in the Tesla ecosystem, it's definitely the way to go, in my opinion. So it's going to be interesting to see what the guys say about that. I agree, and I think, um, like you said, it's definitely better for customers. That's why um, Energy Expos, like um, Open Energy in Sydney, not Open Energy. Um, what's it called? The um, the uh, one in Sydney, the Energy Expo. All energy. All energy. Or, no. Oh, that's Melbourne. No. Smart energy is Sydney. Yeah. Like, yeah, their conference. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, but for all these conferences, I think that's it's the it's almost like holding a little mini conference on a niche yeah, on a look, product. Because it, it's the same where people go, Well, why should I pick you over you? And it's very rarely you can do that all in one place. Yeah, personally I get a little bit tired with conferences at the moment because I've been to so many lately, but I find conferences to be a little bit overwhelming personally because there's too many people there and maybe, you know, I, I know a lot of people in the industry, so there's a lot of people to talk to and it's very overwhelming. Whereas I think sometimes it's better if there's just one or two things. If you're going to a particular presentation, you're just learning one, two, maybe three different products and you can speak to the people directly and you've got a lot of time to do that. It's a bit less rushed and crowded. I think conferences can, can get a bit hectic for everyone. Also, they're not always based on the homeowner. A lot of the conferences in the industry are more like industry focused. So I don't know how many homeowners actually go to All Energy, for example. Uh, that's true, yeah. And I think, like you said, making it a smaller attendance, like, you know, 50 people, like we've got for this one coming up, even, even with that such small amount and with it being only one or two, we kind of weed out the ones that you definitely like, these guys aren't really pushing the boundaries or they're not doing anything that's so much different from X, you know, you kind of get the two market leaders and then kind of let the Titans battle it out. Mm. So with our um, upcoming workshops and little events and stuff, what marketing channels do you think are going to be uh, the best performing or what are, you, what are you focusing your energy on as far as the marketing for our upcoming events and campaigns at the moment? Um, I'll be focusing majority of the traffic, I think, on Meta, definitely Facebook. Um, oh. We've had a few talks lately with um, even the Lunch and Learns with One Life Club that are saying looking at leveraging TikTok. Um, but I think given our demographic and what we're offering, I think leveraging Facebook mostly as well as Instagram to then get that demographic onto the website, I think it's the best way to do it. Because we want to register, we want to know that people are coming and then that's a good way to really know uh, one way to get it out and then when they come and register it's a way to conf confirm those numbers yeah it's good to have the rsvps for the workshop as much as i love the idea of of lightning energy being like a nightclub on a saturday with a huge lineup right down the road <laughs> taking photos of everyone lining up to get in i think it might not be the best experience for people coming so we do definitely encourage people to register for the events so we know who's coming. We can make sure that, you know, we've got the right amount of people to look after everyone. We've got the right amount of, of staff who are there to ask, answer questions. Everything down to the right amount of chairs and enough water to keep everyone happy. So, yeah, look, it's really important that people RSVP. But, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of events coming up. Really looking forward to that. 
Uh, I think that'll, that'll do for today. Let's just keep it nice and short and sharp. But yeah, yeah no worries. Jake, thank you for coming on the podcast. Not a problem. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Awesome.